So we've got here a right upper limb model. We're looking from a medial point of view. We can fairly clearly see in yellow that there's a whole lot of nerve uh, or neural structures here. So what we can see then, if we turn the specimen slightly, we still have a medial point of view. This little collection of structures up the proximal end is the brachial plexus. So you don't need to identify any of the individual structures that are in here making up the plexus. Just know that if this is pinned, it's the brachial plexus. Now, as we move down into the axilla or armpit region, we can see that there are three nerves, or at least hopefully you can, <coughs> that disappear and move away from the axilla. So here we've got the first of those nerves here. That is the axillary nerve. So let's zoom into this region, have a closer look so we can see them more clearly. So here, the superior extent, we have the axillary nerve. And notice that where it runs is over the distal or inferior end of this muscle here, which is subscapularis. So it disappears by running over the distal end of subscapularis into a little fossa or a little opening here, a little space. And that's the axillary nerve. So it's the first one to disappear on this model. Now then the second one we can see in the middle of the picture here, that is the musculocutaneous nerve. If we tilt the model this way, we can see that it's actually going into this muscle here, which is the coracobrachialis muscle. So the first one to disappear goes over subscapularis, the, the inferior end of it. And the second one disappears into the muscle valley of coracobrachialis. So that's the musculocutaneous nerve. Then the third one to disappear is the largest branch of the plexus, this one here. That's the radial nerve, and it goes into the triceps. So if you see a big nerve disappearing into the triceps brachii, that's the radial nerve. Now on this model, you can fairly easily just go, oh look, one, two, three. So you can see all three of them there. And you can just memorize them, first, second, and third, and know the first one is axillary, the second is musculocutaneous, and the third is the radial. But if you're looking at a specimen where there's a lot of veins as well that are not on this model, it's not so easy. And if you can see the axillary nerve, chances are you can't see the other two. And the same applies so for the others. So chances are you're only going to be able to see one of these three clearly at a time. So you can't just go, oh, first, second, third, oh, third one, it's the radial. Because chances are it's radial is the only one you can see because the others will be covered with veins and arteries and, and maybe even muscles. So you need to know where they go. So remember, axillary, close to subscapularis, runs over the distal or inferior extent of subscapularis. Musculocutaneous goes into coracobrachialis. Radial goes into the tricep because you will be able to see where they're going uh, if you're looking at a specimen, but you won't necessarily be able to see all three of them. Okay, but here on the model, hopefully it's, it's pretty clear and simple. What we've got then is we can see now that there are two nerves that carry on down through the arm and then into the forearm. Now this one here ends up running into the cubital fossa, this depression at the front of the elbow. That one is the median nerve. You can see it running here over brachialis. This one is a bit more posterior, but they're both here on the medial surface of the arm between the bicep and the tricep. But this one is heading down here very close to this structure, which is your medial epicondyle of the humerus, and it runs in between that and the olecranon of the ulna. So this is the ulnar nerve running in that groove between those two structures. Now on all the specimens that, you're, that you'll find this nerve on, that's where it will be heading. So if it's pinned up here somewhere, all you have to do is just look down and see where it's going, and you'll know if it's the ulnar nerve because it'll be heading right to that little tunnel between those two structures, the medial epicondyle and the olecranon. Whereas the median nerve will be heading more anteriorly over the brachialis there, 
fairly close to the distal tendon of the biceps brachii and then into the forearm under the superficial flexors. Now in the forearm, both these nerves carry on. They go all the way down to the hand. So the median nerve is right in the midline of the forearm there, right in the middle, between medial and lateral sides, whereas the ulnar nerve runs right down the, the ulnar side, which makes perfect sense. Now there in between, or certainly the median nerve here, is in between flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus. So you need to be looking at a fairly deep um, level to be able to spot it anywhere here in the forearm. But, it's not shown on this model, but it does become quite superficial, fairly close to this, which is the flexor retinaculum. So just here, you should be able to find the median nerve just before you get to the hand whereas the ulnar nerve stays pretty deep. You can find it by moving the superficial muscles out of the way, but it does stay pretty deep there in the forearm. Now, just a couple of other things to let you know about this model. We saw the axillary nerve disappearing just distal to subscapularis, but on this model, we get to see it again. So here, just distal this time to the teres minor muscle, we can see a nerve coming around through that little opening there going around the surgical neck of the humerus. So that's the axillary nerve. Now we don't have any specimens where you can see that, but on this model that just means there's another place there where you can find the axillary nerve. And then this large nerve here is in between the heads of the triceps brachii. That's the radial nerve. Remember we saw it disappearing from a medial point of view and going into the tricep. So here it is from a posterior point of view Again, I don't think we have any specimens where you can see it in that location. But we do get one more look at the radial nerve on this model. And here it is here, just uh, get coming out of the arm and moving into the forearm. Here we've got the radial nerve, and then notice that it splits just here. So that's the end of the radial nerve. It splits into a superficial and a deep branch, which you don't need to identify. But this bit here before it splits is radial. Now it's deep to the brachioradialis and extensor carpi radialis longus muscles here. And you're only going to find it if you can move those aside and spot it here. So not every specimen will allow you to do that, but some uh, uh, actually do. Okay, so you might be able to find that on some of the specimens. But if I were to pin it, I'm more likely to pin it up here in the axilla where you can see it disappearing into the tricep. 